Hello. Am, am, am I on? Is it working? Yes, you're on. You are on. Cool. <laughs> How are you? How's it going? Good. So you're in uh, Bondi, is that right? In in, uh, in Sydney? Yeah, I'm in Bondi. Um, mm-hmm. I grew up down in Wollongong, um, uh-huh. and, but have lived up in the city uh, for a few years now. But I am um, when I can travel, I, I have a US 01 work visa uh, through um, a band I work with overseas. So that's handy. Last few years have found me traveling back and forth, kind of following the summer, um, yes. or the festival season usually, but yeah, <laughs> not, not at the moment. <laughs> because the, the perception from my side of the TV camera, I suppose, is that you're kind of living this rock and roll life of following the bands around and shooting things as they happen and it all looks very you know free spirit stuff but i suspect yeah. there's a lot more uh business and a lot more professionalism behind the scenes which we're not a- aware of so um you know it's not an easy life being a photographer these days is it no no especially if you want to try shoot mostly most of your stuff on film um and in the music industry that has no money also <laughs> it makes it hard um, what the play is really um, showing us in the exhibitions is it's all film and it's all Australian bands. Is that right? Um, it's all shot at Australian festivals. The majority, I think there's two images. Um, there's one image that isn't uh, an Australian band and there's one photo that isn't an Australian festival. But the the idea was being sort of, yeah, landlocked here at home um, to sort of focus or try show the stuff that I wouldn't normally share on my, you know, my website or on my Instagram and stuff that sort of sits shooting lots of film. You know, it's, I, I'm kind of, I like to hold on to images. Um, I feel like they, uh, they're kind of special. Um, I don't just like spraying them out there. So they, I might be a few years later, it'll come back around or I'll find an image that'll stand out. And that's sort of what I tried to do here. But yeah, with the focus sort of around Australian music festivals and my time shooting them here. Um, yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll get we'll get the elephant in the room out of the way first. And that's this choice to shoot professionally using film in live event situations, which is let's say <clears throat> let's be frank, it's, it's difficult to shoot film in low light and in fast changing situations. So can you give us perspective on, on that choice and, and the reasoning behind it? Yeah, I guess um, sort of in the early days when I was starting, I was sort of, I was playing with a bunch of different mediums. Um, I shoot digitally um, professionally as well, but um, for like quick turnaround jobs and stuff where it's needed. Um, But for me, it's, I guess it's sort of more out of a creative sort of background. I sort of I started shooting on film and this lady I was assisting was a film uh, photographer, Sophie Howarth, and I was coming up to Bondi and helping refile her negatives um, and asking questions. And she'd be like, try this film uh, next time you go see a band. And so it was like this mentorship. And I just couldn't recreate these moments I was getting on film on my digital camera. It wasn't uh, sort of losing that magic. and everyone I looked up to, uh, like your, your Jim Marshalls, um, Robert Frank, uh, Annie Libovitz, you know, they were all, I look at all those like uh, photos that are so iconically like sort of ingrained in our minds, like music photos. Um, and for me to tell my story, I had to have film. Um, also that thing of just every uh, frame is really valuable when I'm shooting on film uh, because of you know, how much it costs and how much you can lug around with you on tour. It becomes hard going through airports and uh, scanners, especially in countries that aren't as nice as Australia. So <laughs> I've dealt with all those um, struggles along the way. Uh, but yeah, just that, um, that waiting um, for the moment to happen and like kind of, uh, you know, reflect it's sort of like it comes out of this innate place of just my reaction to the moment uh whereas like you know any moment on stage can look amazing and you could shoot and shoot and shoot on digital but what story you try and tell and what image are you going to pick um yeah for me sort of simplifying things is always better for me (laughs) i can overthink stuff uh so yeah less gear um less things to play with um and more focus on uh the moment Man, yeah, the image. 
the vibe. I mean, I, I, we were just talking before we, we started and um, we were just talking about that sort of organic look to film and the fact that people seem to be f- afraid of, let's say, grain or noise in their shots these days. But yeah. you you're embracing that and it adds that sort of organic feel to the pictures, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And like I was saying as well, um, I had mentioned that over my sort of like time shooting over the last 10 years, a lot of um, venues and festivals and stuff uh, with the development of technology and lighting had gone from the, um, you know, like the classic sort of like vapor lamp stuff with the colored gels on stage to now they're all LEDs with like all the colors change inside them and shooting, shooting the old like lighting on digital was, you could get by. I thought it was okay, but um, compared to like film and especially going into like when these new LED lights, uh, like low, like reds and dark blue on stage is just like it on digital. I just, I, it just looks, it doesn't give me the same feel or depth, exactly what you said that you get from grain when it starts to be, you get that color and that saturation. Um, usually cause I'm pushing the film, you know, we've lost all of our, a lot of our high speed films that we used to have. So I find myself, um, you know, playing with what is available and sort of pushing it to its limits. So, you know, I'll push portrait of 400, like three stops, maybe sometimes depending on how I'm feeling and just, you know, just see what you get um, and learn from what, what works and what doesn't work. <laughs> um, but yeah. Some color negative film you're shooting. Yeah. Um, sorry. Well, portrait would be positive, negative. Yes. Not positive. I, I do shoot, slide um but i cross process it a lot um yeah just for that sort of look is sort of something i uh same it's that throwback that nostalgia of stuff i grew up with like reading uh rolling stone magazines and seeing uh photo those classic photos of um bands like from the 90s even like when they were still all shooting on film and just that heavy saturated color was such a look um i sort of really i love that (laughs) <laughs> For those of you who don't know, maybe you could just tell us what cross cross processing transparency film is. So yeah, I would get um like slide film, and you you process it not through the right chemical bath it would normally go through. So it goes through what the negative bath would be in, um, and it's because slide is very temperature based and uh, temperamental. You kind of you don't necessarily know what you're going to always get on the other side of the development, which kind of adds. It, yeah, it's fun and it's scary. <laughs> you know, oh, this is all coming back to me from the 90s. You mentioned shooting film in bands in the 90s. That's, that's I'm a bit of a dinosaur, I know, but that's what I was no, doing. No, that's the best stuff. <laughs> Didn't do much cross-processing. I was I was more of a technician than more than creative. But anyway, it's about me. I know some people, uh, some people are very against the cross-process. I know they're like, you don't do that. It's horrible. I'm like... Yeah. Certain films probably aren't the best to cross process. I find that the Kodak films are really uh, nice. Um, you get more of a natural kind of balance in the color. The Fuji uh, slide films um, can run a bit more on the green, heavy green tinted side, but can look a bit sickly, kind of like the Lomo purple film. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone yeah. comes out yeah. looking yeah. like yeah. Smurfs. <laughs> and then I'm assuming that you will then scan these negatives in some fashion and then they go to digital print. Is that right? Yeah. So I deliver all my stuff for like for a shoot. Um, if I'm doing a band like press photos or something, I'll shoot the majority of the shoot on film. I might shoot a few digitals just to get an idea of what's happening. If it's studio, if it's outside, I probably wouldn't bother. I'd jump straight into it. Um, I feel with music and bands, um, there's a thing where then depending on the level of the band, they might not have been shot that much before or done like proper photo shoots. So everyone can be a bit awkward or uncomfortable and trying to get in um, a flow I find is a lot harder in a, on a digital sort of um, setup for me because people keep wanting to see the back of the camera. You keep stopping mm. as opposed to like setting everything up, letting people sort of fall into their natural um they like become comfortable and then let me sort of shoot around them. Um, and it sort of keeps the flow moving uh, when not everyone's stopping and I've kind of got control and, you know, cause it's, it can be such a throw off when you look at an image and it's like, Oh, that one's not good. And then, you know, it sort of can spiral out of control quite well. It's like, you can't take a um, judgment off one image, you know? 
So it kind of give, yeah, it yeah. brings me, it gives the control back to me shooting on the film. But um, yeah. I did used to process a lot at uh, home, like black and white. Um, I've never done color myself, but um, I have a really good lab uh, that I use. Uh, I have one in LA and one here in Sydney. And um, I guess that's the whole other half to getting to this level is uh, the turnaround. So still wanting to offer a unique product, but still needing, you know, quick turnaround and good quality scans. Yeah. So your relationship with your lab okay. is the whole okay other the, half. <laughs> it's okay to name the, uh, the, the lab if you want. <laughs> I'm sure oh yeah, I use, um, I, I use photo impact imaging in the US, they're great. And I use uh, Rewind Photo in Sydney and I used another lab called Sharon Cross Photo for years, um, but I kind of rotate. I'm kind of in a position though at the moment, to be honest, where um, getting the, uh, you know, having to get that uh, consistent um, results back all the time is hard when, you know, these labs sometimes have a high turnover of staff. <laughs> um, and, you know, sometimes yeah. scans can be really good and sometimes scans can be like, damn it, or like they've missed something and it's like a bit of going back and forth. So I've been looking more into sort of taking um, that on board myself, I guess, the, the scanning uh, side. And just because I know what I want, um, yeah, you know, like... It's all, it's like I said, it's that relationship, like the, whoever the technician is putting through the film might like, like their portrait really warm or some might like it really cool. And I get it back. I'm like, well, this does not look like it looked la last week. Whereas like my lab in the U S a pro lab is like, they're very consistent. Um, and they deal with a lot of like high end, lots of turnover. Um, they're really amazing guys as well. Um, but yeah, everyone, everyone's good. It's sort of less like, you gotta, you gotta work out what works for you. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That turn everything is hugely important. It's really hard to run a lab with just jibs and jabs of film coming through. Anyway, we should look at some of your pictures from the exhibition. Yeah, sure. So I'm going to share this screen um, on my other monitor. Hopefully that will be the first one, which, um, so what, what I'd like to hear from you, McClay, is, is the, the like who, where, when, what, and why of okay. these images and just give us a bit of a perspective. So uh, yeah. So this is, um, the, the band we're looking at is Car Seat Headrest. Um, they're a band from the United States, but this is at an Australian music festival uh, called Laneway Festival, St. Jerome's Laneway Festival, which started as a small boutique festival, but now is like the only remaining, um, or one of the only remaining uh, like touring festivals left in Australia. So they have, um, shows all over Australia um, and uh, it would usually be running around this sort of time of the year. I'd be out on the road and um, going from Brisbane to Sydney to Melbourne to Adelaide to Perth in the space of two weekends. Uh, so usually by the time you get to Melbourne, um, you're a bit tired and haven't slept. <laughs> I was touring um, and... Yeah, this is just one of the photos I took on tour. It was a sort of nice, um, I guess stages are really unique. They can be hard to shoot or they can be easy to shoot depending where you're at. Um, touring with a festival allows me, you know, access wherever I kind of need to go, which is not a nicety. But, you know, that doesn't mean I um, don't treat that with like sort of the respect it needs. Uh, there's like a protocol, I guess, to shooting, which I've sort of learned over the years of how to act on stage. You know, you're on a working stage. Yeah. I'm not the most important person up there to get the photo. It is uh, sound guys. There is guitar techs. There is, you know, there's a plethora of things going on. And my, the biggest thing for me is just to stay out of everyone's way, <laughs> but still get the shot. Yeah. Um, really so this was, point. Um, yeah, this was just a nice moment. Yeah, yeah I think um, that's a really important point. Stages where, like, it's sort of nice as well. This was a stage that had open sides, which you don't get all the time. And the way the light was coming through was creating these kind of pockets. So you really got that, like, depth where the, the shards of light were capturing the smoke. And um, I don't know. It was just so nice. <laughs> uh, and I would have been, this is all, everything I'm showing here was all shot on my Leica um, M6 TTL. Um, 
Yeah, and this was actually with an old 50 millimeter lens I picked up in the US secondhand. It's the it's an old uh, it's a silver lens. It's the 51.5, I think. I don't know. It's behind me. It's um yeah. I don't shoot on a 50 a lot. I'm kind of a 35 guy, just the way my eye sees and the the small spaces I find myself in backstage and on tour buses. 30 kind of 35 kind of works well for what I'm seeing. Sometimes if I'm 50, I'm like I'm too on top of stuff. But for live, um, this was sort of perfect because it let me punch in a bit tighter. But I just sort of love how the yeah. Um, yeah, I just like the depth in this one and how you can see the lead singer in the background just yeah, yeah. It's a tricky lens tricky to use. Lens. You mill on stage. I Pardon? Think. It's a tricky lens to use on stage um, because yeah, it's, it's a tricky uh, lens to use. You mill it's on neither stage one thing nor the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm getting some feedback. Other, you know, I don't know if everybody else can totally. hear that. Totally. Hear that? totally. Yeah, and especially because I'm no, so no, naturally no, just so attuned. So I don't know if everybody else can hear that. Just hold on a second. I'm getting this sort of very delayed feedback through my speakers. Can you hear that? Echo. Just hold on a sec, Mike. Okay. I'm getting yeah. this sort of very delayed feedback through it's my speakers. Back. Can you, Can you hear that? turn my voice down on your computer? Um, uh, yeah. Because a little bit, yeah, a little bit of talk back. over. Can you turn yeah. my voice down on? It's really a bit yeah. weird. Yes, let me do that. Is that better? That, that sounds better. Sorry, everybody. It's, uh, it's, um, it, I was probably bouncing around being very confusing. All right. So let's, um, let's go on to the next one as here. This, this is sort of, well, this is the image we picked as a, the kind of hero shot of the, uh, of the exhibition, but uh, you better tell us what's going on here. <clears throat> so this is, um, Eamon from the chat. <laughs> uh, they're a band from the Sunshine Coast. Um, and this is at Laneway Music Festival. So these guys are uh, a three piece. Uh, they're quite young. They kind of um, had a big song called Smoko um, a few years back. Um, I This was there. They did like a little guest spot on one of these small stages at Laneway, which was to stage set up in an activation. Um, and so they're like you're in the crowd, basically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they got pretty wild and uh, next minute he was in the crowd and he was on everyone's shoulders and, it, um, yeah, it was just made for some, uh, you know, when stuff like this is happening, I want to be there to capture it. Yeah, this is the sort of stuff that's really difficult to shoot. So anybody who's listening who's used a rangefinder camera um, will know that this sort of stuff happening quickly is really difficult. So, McClay, how do you deal with these very fast changing situations with just simple things like focus and exposure? Um, it's a, uh, I don't know. I sort of like, I'll set up my exposure. Um, I think the distance, well, I don't know the proper word for it. You can probably help me with this. I'm not the most tech savvy, but a really big hack for me on the rangefinder system was um, you know, the, the metering, the distance metering on the top of the lens, yep. um, which kind of gave me, it like popped this bubble in my head or it was like this realization of not having to be always spot on focus all the time. Like I used to wait a lot, like, like, no, 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 it's not right. And I'm like, you know, that's not always necessary, especially in like a situation like this, where it's bright, you can be a bit like, Oh, I'm trying to get on focus, but I'm also like, if the moment's happening and I'm not there, my thing, this finger is still working. <laughs> my brain's still working probably faster than this part. So that's sort of how that works. <laughs> that's, that's a good way of, because I know people will ask this question or, and you've probably, you've already preempted it really, but it is, it's something that people struggle with. And what, what McClay's talking about is basically pre-focusing your, the lens using the scale on the top there to whatever seems appropriate, maybe two meters or something. And it's something that's really difficult to do with modern cameras because they don't have a focusing scale on the, the lens. Some Correct. do, some don't, but all of the classic Leica M lenses do. And it's something that's well worth using. I've got a couple of questions for you from some of our um, uh, uh, audience. Um, let me just get the one from Terry O'Hagan who sent an email through yesterday. Um, Hi, McClay. First of all, thanks for the opportunity to post a question. I suppose it's sneakily two questions in one, really. <laughs> How and when did your big break come about, i.e. when were you recognised as a serious and quality music gig photographer? Um, 
I feel like it's still happening, to be honest. <laughs> um, it's a slow burn. You don't get anywhere quick, especially in this industry. Um, and, you know, it's only become more and more popular with the readiness of digital cameras and people uh, shooting at gigs. Um, it's just time. It's the time. It's putting the time in. Um, you have to go out and learn. I, I used to shoot for, for I, I mean, I get paid now, but there's lots of times where there's there's a lot of back and forth to try to get paid <laughs> what you think you're, um, you're worth. Uh, and you just get better at that over time. But um, in the beginning, I reached out to a lot of, there was like street press magazines called The Brag, um, which were, they still exist. There's one called The Music. They've kind of all changed. But I went around and I hit up a lot of places in Sydney and asked if I could shoot for them just for the experience. So I, they started sending me out to do cover gigs. I might shoot three gigs in one night. And I'd send over the digital images and then they'd get printed in the back of the magazine in the live show sort of review section. And that was like so exciting just to see images getting printed. But I really got to sort of, um, you know, cut your teeth and learn. Um, and then the more experience I got and the more people you meet um, sort of starts to open up other doors. So I, I, I was assisting um, a photographer, Sophie Howarth, who I mentioned before, who was big day arts photographer. And I'd been catching the train an hour and a half up from Wollongong to Bondi to help file negatives and back home in the evenings. And I'd done this for a year and helped her with a whole bunch of other stuff. And then it came around, she's like, I, I'm thinking on this big day out, I need an extra set of hands, would you like to come and um, shoot the front of house band stuff while I shoot all the portraiture stuff backstage? And that was, you know, that was a break. Um, and But then that led me to meet some other people, um, you know, over the years. And now those people um, work at music labels or manage their own bands. Um, and, you know, it was like, uh, so someone I met on that tour, uh, Mel Nahas, uh, who's a really good friend of mine, and she was looking after a band called Jaguar Ma. And they had, um, you know, they'd just been, I don't know if they'd even been signed yet. They just, the, the management had signed them, but maybe not a label, but they were getting a feature in NME, which is a big uh, music publication from the UK, yeah. which was like, oh, like this is for a print job. And it was like, you know, there's no money, um, but there's an opportunity uh, to get your photo printed. Um so I jumped at it and, you know, I shot it all on film because that's what I wanted to do. So, you know, I was working in a retail job and that helped cover my film cost. But it meant that the photo that got printed was what I artistically wanted to put out into the world um, as my work. So I guess um, following all the opportunities you get and knowing that, you know, one opportunity may lead to another thing or, you know, maybe I won't get paid on this job, but me going there and meeting those people means next time they have a job that has, you know, some budget, um, it could get thrown my way. So it's sort of like, that's just an internal thing that you have to weigh up of how much do you want to give? Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like I, I still give um, a lot, to be honest, you know, like there'll be shoots and be like, oh, we've only got how much money I'm like, that's how much the film's going to cost. <laughs> or that's how much my Uber costs to get from Hollywood to Silver Lake. <laughs> and, and you're paying me in Australian dollars. <laughs> but, um, you know. I've heard that story from a few people. And in fact, a lot of people I know in the industry who are of my vintage will, will tell a similar story. It's about the, doing the hard yards and, and being seen and also a little bit of right place, right time. And yes. so, so, yeah. So a um, couple more questions and we'll move on to the next picture. Um, Gary Gordon. Uh, hi, McClay. I saw the, the great direct Dustin Grain uh, exhibition at the Leica Sydney store. Tell us how you dealt with the low light shooting techniques. I tell you what, why don't we um, answer that question when we come to a picture that was taken in low yeah. light? That would be a good one. So we'll, we'll hold that thought. Um, and Ken Wang wants to know what would, if, if there is such a thing, what's your go to sort of settings for aperture and shutter speed? Um, look, <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's go to like what you'd like to shoot, but uh, you're usually dealing with what's been given to you. So it's sort of like, it's always adapting to my, you, you have no control over what's happening. You know, the creative, like usually at a festival or something, it's like it's, you could be the middle of the day 
and, um, you know, the band's in shadow because they're on stage, but the crowd's out in bright sun. So they're either going to blow out or you're going to get a silhouette. So, you know, there's so many factors that come into it. But, like, I guess a classic sort of for, like, music photography, low light at night. I mean, I know that I'm going to have to be on at least, like, 1600 ISO or 800, and I'm that allows me to shoot, you know, around... Uh, I'll probably be at f2, 2.8, depending, and like shutter speed, 125, 60, 30th. Sometimes I want f4 and it's at a 15th of a second, you know, but it's all around that. It's kind of playing within that low, um, you know, slow shutter speeds, um, fast apertures <laughs> is yeah, what makes yeah, your job makes easy, you know. Yeah. I found that when I started like going to a gig and you had, the kit lens that was only f4 that does not work you need a fast lens you want 1.4 f2 or uh, i mean on film or, or you kind of you're going to be struggling unless but then you could go to see like taylor swift or someone at a big arena show and then the light there is it's so bright like all they want is light on them whereas i've worked with bands it's like if the light fader goes up over this I'm walking off stage, like turn the lights down. Like they don't want the lights on at all. Or like, yeah, artists like Ryan Adams, I went to a show of his and it was just like, he only had lanterns on stage. That was it. It's like, it's like you can't take a photo with no light. No, <laughs> it's no. the whole other half. So um, we've the light the change pictures you may have noticed. So this one I, I find difficult to interpret. So you better tell me a little bit about, it looks like a, is that an aquarium in the background? It is. Uh, this is at Sydney Aquarium, and the musician is Jack River. Um, she's an Australian musician. She is amazing. And this was her first photo shoot. Uh, so we were doing, I was employed by the, her record label to take a bunch of press photos that were going to be used for, you know, they, they get sent wherever. <laughs> Once they're handed over, you don't really know where they're going to end up. You see someone walking down the street with a shirt on, and you'll be like, hey, that's my photo. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this was at Sydney Aquarium. We'd shot a few, we'd shot a few photos. We were sort of just like cruising through and I was using the light through the fish tanks and trying, kind of wanted something a bit sort of, um, you know, ethereal. Uh, and there was a, there was a fish tank with a bunch of jellyfish in it that had, uh, which was in, it was like a black backed fish tank, I should say and it's lit from the sides uh, and they were on like a rope, the lights were on a rotating sort of color wheel. So it was like cycling through red, purple, blue. And I shot a few frames of just the jellyfish sort of, you know, in the black submerged. And then I, um, I'd kind of got to the end of the roll and I was like, hey, it'd be cool actually. Cause I kind of knew that if I shot her, that silhouetted that I would get this sort of effect. Um, so yeah, I actually like, you know, when you like, I've done this before as well on tour, which is like a little hack. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's a hack, but you'll be, um, so I'm kind of going the long way around answering this question, <laughs> but, um, if I'm shooting, uh, at, at night, say, so I've got a high speed film in, but I don't finish the role on that night and I wake up the next day and we're hitting the streets and we're outside and I'm with the band. I'm like, I don't want to be shooting on, you know, like 3,200 black and white film right now. Um, I'll, I can like, I'll wind the film back and I'll listen for the click of the tail and then I'll pull the film out and I'll mark, you know, 20 shots at this speed and I'll put that roll of film away and I'll put another roll of film in and then I'll come back. Yeah. And sometimes you, like when you put it over, you gotta remember where you shot, otherwise you'll, um, you'll mess up your frame, or like you'll shoot over something you don't want to shoot over. But um, I knew that I was shooting over something here and was kind of just sort of leaving it to the, you know, the higher powers uh, to sort of hopefully that I'd get a nice shot. So I sort of just round, wound back to where I thought the jellyfish frames were and I shot like another five or six frames. So I got back to the end of the roll and yeah, this was just sort of one of those, um, 
happy mistakes, double exposures that you can't really, I planned for it, but I didn't know what I was going to get. It, it's um, what you've described is something that, you know, is, is, has been, you know, it's not uh, a unique technique when you want to do a double exposure, not all cameras allow that. Yeah. Uh, and, and you had to wind back or do various little hacks and they are, that's, it's a good description. It, it is a hack and it's a little bit hit and miss. Um, I've certainly done similar things myself. And I think, you know, when, when it works, it works superbly. Of course, the question is, well, you could easily have done this with a digital shot, but I think I, I still think that's losing something in that this is, this is a, an original, if you like, rather than a constructed image later. And I think it, it stands out better for it. So um, that's, it's a cracker that one. I'm going to go on to the next one because um it's uh, we're going to uh, <laughs> there's a lot of description going on here and oh yeah yeah, uh, yeah time right. too much so um, this one's super super clean it's a little bit different to the other ones that there's there's a lot going on in lots of the pictures but this one is really mellow somehow yeah i mean it wasn't mellow at the time shooting it because i was hanging out of a car window tracking next to um adam and reuben from peking duck um, yeah, I'd sort of had this idea and it was sort of like a, a photographer I like a lot in the U S Danny Clint, who shoots a lot of music stuff. He's an amazing photographer, like a shooter as well. Um, he has this really incredible shot of the black keys in a car. And I was like, I really love just this feeling of like being on the road and, you know, the movement and just sort of, I don't know, the spontaneity of it. And, um, I'd had a relationship with these guys. We'd shot um, a few years prior. Um, and so when they asked me for new press shots and I had an idea, I was like, I'd like to do something like I think in a car. Um, and they were like, let's do it. So they like, they literally called, we were at the pub, they called up, we booked this car, we did the shoot the following day. Um, and I think this was like a 69 CAD mm -hmm. um, with the big wings off the back. And I think Ruben was just enjoying himself so much because he was getting to drive this car <laughs> um, and this is sort of at the port in Sydney uh, where they have all the containers and it was that same thing of like I knew it was going to be a backdrop mm -hmm. um, cross-processing the film so like the whites and the reds because all the containers are all different colors so I kind of knew I had this palette I was working with and I guess this is just sort of um, yeah I'm, I'm tracking alongside of them and um, I mean there's nice the lighting's really nice as well. So like you've got, um, you can see the way Ruben's looking on his right shoulder, the sun was sort of hitting them from behind. So sort of rimming them. Yeah. And then I was in a white car. So it's kind of creating a lot of nice fill light on their faces. So it's very evenly lit, um, which is also nice. Um, there's a whole bunch from this series. They use the black and white ones for the album, uh, the single cover on the album. Um, I love the yeah. way that the, uh, the like, color yeah. works with the, the containers. You know, you've got the same sort of um, cyan color of the car and the containers. It's, uh, it's, it's a very polished looking image, this one. I, I, it's interesting to see that it wasn't at all polished the way you set it up, but the result is polished, which is really very clever I like that. Yeah, I like to uh, sort of like, I kind of will visualize something. You can even go on to the next photo, but like I'll, I find that I'll sort of like visualize an image before it kind of happens. Um, and that kind of helps me find locations or, you know, as much as I don't plan too much, I kind of in my head, I have an idea of how I'd like it to go. And then I'm open to whatever happens, uh, you know, in between, because that's where you get the stuff that just like you go with your gut or something that someone in the band suggests or, you know, I'm open to it, like collaboration. That's what the, it's all about at, at the end of the day, that we get to make something cool together, which is sort of a, the... Um, a big part of the fun and enjoyment in shooting music and bands and as opposed to like editorial or fashion where everything's like, you know, can be a lot more um, strict on, you know, how clothing looks and, you know, perfecting things that I don't really see as so important. Um, I'm more about a moment and like a feeling. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it reminds me of that expression that they say from improv comedy. The answer is always yes and. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you build from there. Yeah. You know, you never say totally. no. It's like, yeah, let's try that. Okay. So this image, yeah. very, very stylish. Um, tell us about this one. This is um, Phil Jamison, the lead singer from Australian rock band Grinspoon uh, at the Horton Pavilion in Sydney, which is an iconic Australian music venue. Um, I've known... 
I knew the band and I've known Phil for a number of years from, like I said, growing up young in Big Day Out and Phil was there. And then, you know, I'm that kid that's always been around with the camera. So now it's like, oh, McClay, <laughs> you know. So if I reach out and ask, um, I wasn't getting paid to do this. It was like, hey, Phil, I'd love to come and shoot some photos of you guys um, next, you know, in a few weeks when you're playing at the Horton. Do you think that'd be something that could happen? And he's like, I'll sort you out a pass, no worries. So it's like the being being invited or asking sometimes. Um, you got to like lean on those um, relationships that you build. Um, and then the their tour photographer who was um, shooting with them, uh, Luke Kellett, who's an amazing photographer, shoots Leica as well. Um, he was sort of like, oh, and this is another thing why you have friends and friendships and relationships. He's like halfway through the set, Phil pops up out the back near the sound desk and does a solo or like plays a song on his own. I was like, oh my God, I've got to get that shot. So I kind of had a minute to think about what was going to happen there. So the light you see beaming on uh, Phil is actually from main stage. And he's at the back of the venue at the sound desk where the mix is. You can see the mixing console right there next to him. So I was sort of like, and at the back of the Horton, there's like a slight riser um, of seats. And I kind of just, I started down next to him and I was like, this is a bigger picture. You know, it's like a bigger feeling. And I ran up there and I think I got two or three frames and I kind of, it was hard because it's obviously so dark and the light was so bright. So I, I shot, I like I meted myself. I think I shot three frames. And I kind of, I went off whatever like the light meter inside was kind of telling me. And then I kind of went a few stops under, um, you know, kind of went from there. It worked. It worked. It's a, it's, that's a hard shot to pull off in, in when, when you've only got a few seconds to do it. That's, yeah, you've got to move quick. <laughs> Yeah. I'm that guy that's running past you. <laughs> yeah. But you see, there's an inch, there's a really interesting point for those listening is that it's, it's having an inkling of what's coming up and that it's like shooting sport. You need to know the sport to know that something is likely to happen. If you know the band and you know their acts, then you know that there's a moment where somebody will probably do something and you can be ready for it. And I think that it's not about the photography. It's about knowing the music and the band, I think. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That all goes in, Hand in hand. But I mean, even saying that, I um I tour with the band Portugal the Man through the US as their tour photographer. And I've seen their show hundreds of times. <laughs> and it still surprises me. Like I know there's moments, but there's it'll surprise me sometimes with what happens. And um it never gets old, you know. Um, but there are some bands that it'll come out and everything like I mean, it's a, it's a unique thing there. They're, they Everything is on the fly every night, which is very unique because a lot of bands these days, they have a set list that they play every night and the lighting is set to that set list. And it's like literally like there's people controlling it, but it's like hitting play and letting it cycle through like its thing. Whereas like a lot of the people I work with, it's more old school in the fact of like, the guys at the lighting desk, they're like playing the lights, like the bands playing the music and like the sound guys, like playing the sound, like or controlling the sound, just like I'm playing with my camera. Yeah, yeah, good. it's a good analogy. Okay, so detail. Yeah, this is, um, this is at a festival in Tullarook in uh, country Victoria called Boogie Festival, <clears throat> um, which has kind of like a, a country slant on it you know everyone sort of dresses up and can get a bit um fruity which is fun uh and this is yeah hence the pink um pink suit <laughs> this, this guy's name is johnny fritz um and he's a musician and um yeah this was just sort of like uh out and about in the festival it's um it's very casual so a lot of the artists performing will be you know out in the crowd, wandering around, listening to music as well. So you kind of have the opportunity to approach people. Um, and this was just sort of one of those moments, the light and his suit and the shoes. And I was like, I need to get that. <laughs> and yeah. Excellent. That's sort of it. Uh, this is Hockey Dad, um, a Wollongong band. From, um, but this photo is taken at Brisbane Showgrounds. It's Laneway, uh, Laneway Festival again. Uh, oh, yeah. Last year. Um, and this is on some old Kodak slide film I um, 
I found uh, off a, a guy on Gumtree who used to shoot all these big ad campaigns, had all this film in like freezer storage for years and he was going to toss it all and I was able to buy a bunch off him. So this is old expired uh, Kodak um, Ecto. Kodachrome? Yeah, Ectochrome. Sorry. What is his name? Who, who was it? Ectochrome VS, the, the saturated one. Um, and, yeah, I was just sort of playing with the, like I was saying before, you've only got a few options um, in this sort of situation, especially with the film that I already had in there. So, like, a lot of the time I won't shoot a whole roll of film on one band. It'll be I've been somewhere else and I've found myself here and now I'm like, oh, well, this is what I'm rolling with. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and this was just one of those moments. So I sort of was playing with, there was just that time of day, midday sun, you know, summer in Australia, you've got a, that classic harsh toppy light, um, which is so, you know, classically Australian, which is not the easiest to shoot in compared to like when I'm overseas in the States or Europe and it's like you get some really beautiful soft light at festivals and it's like it makes the photos look so different. Like it's amazing how much, just normal ambient light can affect your shots. Um, so, yeah, I just sort of played into that harshness and, um, you know, I, I really like lines and, um, you know, I use the leads a lot in my images to sort of lead me into moments and, like, land me at, like, finishing points almost um, or, like, run me around the frame a little bit. So I kind of like how the silhouettes and the, the lines all sort of, like, converging on him there yeah 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 i would have loved his guitar to be a bit more open for a bit more of a silhouette yeah yeah i got that in melbourne <laughs> <laughs> all right another detail um yeah this is like one of those other just um nice moments of being invited to be there on stage uh this is king gizzard and the lizard wizard they're a band from melbourne um and this is at the sydney roundhouse uh which is um, an old venue in the university. Um, yeah, and this is sort of like their drums were up on uh, quite high rises um, and I was sort of like running around to get to the other side of the stage and just the way the light came through a few times sort of like caught my eye and I was like, oh, it's kind of cool. And it's also the whole thing. It's a double kick drum. So it's sort of like the two big, you know, it's sort of like it has a, it has a feel. Um, you know, most drum kits only have one big bass drum. So this sort of unique, like looked a bit balanced and the fans, the circle and yeah, the drumsticks are right there. So you gotta, you gotta understand the music to understand why the pitch is significant. So you're kind of shooting for the fans in a way, aren't you? Like I wouldn't pick that up because I know <clears> that's music. Yeah, it's sort of, and it's stuff that like, I just love music and um, I love gear and just, I've, I played music when I was younger, so like, you know, getting these opportunities to be alongside these amazing musicians and they've got like these guitars that are like, you know, it's like cameras. It's that similar, uh, there's like a similarity, you know, like an old worn in light is the same as like an old worn in Gibson Les Paul yeah. Yeah. or, you know, I was in the U S and working in a, uh, a, it's called Electrovox recording studios. It's one of the oldest recording studios in the U S it's in Los Angeles and it's across from the Paramount lot. Um, they used to use it for to do all the sound recordings over there and then they'd ship it straight back over to um, Paramount. And, you know, like the drum kit in there is like Hale Blaine's drum kit from the Wrecking Crew. And um, he, he, there's this like, it was insane, the amount of stuff they had in there that was like, oh, that was that person's um, instrument. And like you look up photos and there's Paul McCartney playing drums in wings on that kit and like they only made four of them it's like that obsession with like stuff that carries stories it's like instruments um cameras and film <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah absolutely i mean look at that um guitar collection that david gilmore sold last year or year before it went for oh. like millions and millions of dollars and that was astonishing wasn't it it's so wild <laughs> Yeah, the the um the piano in that studio, uh, the LA studio story, um, was like it was the old piano that sat in the foyer of Capitol Records. So everyone played it. It was like, you know, just like stories like embedded in um in things is sort of something beautiful about that.
Absolutely. I'm going to just take a, a moment to ask a couple of questions. Um, yeah. Wang's been asking a couple of questions, so I think it's time we uh, I, I answered those, or you answered those. Uh, there's two really, um, kind of is related. Do he says what scanner do you use on the road? I mean, do you scan when you're actually on the road? And if you do, when, when and when you have scanned your negatives, do you do any post processing on them? Um, when I'm on the road, I've got. There's so much other stuff that I've got to lug around that a scanner doesn't <clears throat> find its way into my kit. Um, <clears throat> so depending where I am and how long the turnaround is, I I will gather film and post it out um, to a lab and they look after all my dev and scanning. Um, yeah, that's kind of like, I guess, the short of it. Um, I have played with friend scanners before, flatbeds, like the V800s. Um, which can be a bit temperamental and playing around and getting colour. I mean, black and white is okay, but getting good colour scans is a, it's a craft. And you kind of really need to know the film to know what it should look like as well. Um, so, yeah, that's just um, over time. Um, and when you find what you like as well, like my lab knows how I like my shots to look, um, you know, I like that saturated, I do cross process. So they kind of treat it like that. Whereas if they were deving a wedding photographer's stuff, they might be, you know, it might be a bit more of a softer finish for them. So it's sort of de dependent. Does that really answer the question? I think so. I have thought about taking stuff like a tank and a scanner on the road before, yep. but just the logistics of doing that, um, yeah. On tour buses, there's not a lot of room. Um, and my, I'm, like I said, usually the photographer falls into, you're not part of the band, you're the least important person here. <laughs> the fact that you're on the bus is, you know, lucky. So it's like having, or if you're the one that has all the bags to check in and everyone's taken off in yeah. front of you or you're getting held up yeah. back, um, you know, it's all about ease of getting around and making sure I, I like to travel light, so I'm taking photos if we're at airports or wherever we are. I want to try have all my gear within, t within like on my back in, in within one hand, so then I can have a camera in the other. Yeah, that's good approach. Very good approach. All right, we better move along. I think. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like to talk. No, it's good. It's good. There's some really good insights actually coming out, McLean. I, mean, I hope everyone's sort of picking them up. So where are we now? This is Laneway again. Um, these are all like, the, there's a lot from Laneway Festival. They're all kind of scattered from a, over five years. So uh, this is, uh, I don't even, maybe 2016, mm -hmm. 17, um, and at Adelaide. Um, and I was watching a band called Bad Dreams. Uh, they're an Aussie band. They're amazing. You should check them out if you haven't. Um, and... They're just such a fun band on stage, but the crowd was just so lively and having so much fun. And I was like, I'm not getting the shot I want. I, I can shoot the band at another sort of show. And this was just sort of like, I pushed myself into the crowd. So that's why another thing when, um, if I've just got my M6, um, I can kind of get, you can get into places or sort of push through crowds quite easily without like a big SLR kind of body like clunking around. So this is one of those things of just like being in the crowd with everyone and just sort of not facing the stage, but facing the opposite way and just sort of this happened in front of me. Um, yeah, just another one of those moments of just sort of, <clears throat> I think there's like three things in photography is sort of like, um, you know, spatial awareness, mm -hmm. um, luck, mm -hmm. and then just sort of just being there. Um, yeah. 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 It's a quote I've, I'm pretty sure I've said many times in these webinars is that for minor white F8 and be there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You need, it's all about access. It's about being there. It's about seeing it's, it's funny how, how little it is about the actual technical stuff. It's yeah. there's so much more to it than everything else. All right. Yeah. This is a bit more bold. Yes, this is um, some performers. Um, there was a group performing at Laneway Festival on the on a stage, and they're called they're from a group called Heaps Gay, um, and they were just same deal. I had some slide film. I knew it was going to be. I kind of you know that's the other thing. 
I'm putting in film um, as to how I'm kind of thinking. So, you know, it's a bright, sunny day. Um, everyone's wearing all this colourful stuff. I'm like, I want to be shooting on this slide film and I want to be cross-processing it or I want to be shooting on, you know, another kind of coloured film. Or, you know, if it's overcast and grey, I'm like, I'm shooting this on black and white and I'm pushing it so it's more contrasty or, you know, I'm making those editing choices <clears throat> um, in the, like, in the moment, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, I, I get, that's where I get confused with digital stuff or can find myself getting uh, bogged down because I sit there and I'm, I'm in a room now separated from, you know, the whole feeling um, of the festival. Uh, and it's like, where do you begin? You can go anywhere. Whereas like when I'm there, I'm like, you know, you can hear stages like sort of pumping music in the background. These guys are getting ready. There's an energy happening. Um, you know, everyone's getting changed in front of you. There's like streamers, you know, there's boobs and butts flying everywhere. It's like shit. Like, um, and this was just sort of one of those moments. And I was like, Hey, I need to get a photo of you all. And, um, I sort of was like, come over here. And it was like, yeah, same thing. Hard, hard sun, put them in a, like a little light pocket, expose for highlights and just sort of let the fall left, let the rest fall where it falls. Oh, yeah. That's um, you make a very interesting point there about committing to the look in the moment, in the ven in, in the situation. There's a, a, a friend of mine in Mel in uh, New Zealand, well known in Australia called Mike Langford, um, and he makes a very yeah. strong case for shooting with your camera set, shooting like JPEG in camera. He shoots raw as well, but he actually will choose a style that suits the mood of what's in front of him right there and then. Now he's shooting on digital, but he's still taking a similar approach. And you're, yeah. you've got a feel, you've got a mood, and you're choosing a film accordingly. I find that quite astonishing and and very very um, worthy of respect. Um, and it's quite different because you said yourself, you'll often sit there and like, what am I going to do with this picture? Well, this approach, you've already done it, and I think that's quite different to the way a lot of people think these days. Yeah, it's sort of like the I <clears throat> that that workflow works for my for me for some reason in my head. It makes more sense to operate like that. And then sometimes it's like, if I've been running around, like maybe I don't have the film that I want in my bum bag and I'm like, okay, well, I'm making this work. <laughs> and, then, and then that opens up opportunity for something that maybe I wouldn't have planned for. Um, where I've been stuck on tour, you know, you're in Europe somewhere and you can't find any high speed film. And so, yeah, that's where you lean on, like I'm pushing 160 to 800 or 1600 and, you know, um, <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't do that all the time, but there's, you know, there's moments where you can lean into having the freedom to try things um, and making the most of those opportunities. And then there's times where you have to be a little bit more, um, you know, thought out and structured and prepared but you know a lot of the times in these situations you're sort of getting thrown a lot of curveballs so it's sort of like adapting and making stuff work in the moment which is sort of how I like to respond to that's sort of like I feel like how my photography is like in a response it's just sort of like dealing with what I'm given yeah that makes sense so where I where are we in this one <clears throat> this is in Sydney in Centennial Park at a festival called Good Things um, and this is a band called Violent Soho from Brisbane. And uh, the bass player, Luke Henry, is in the photo. He's actually a photographer. He takes photos himself, a lot of film photos, and we have a good relationship and rapport. He'll be like, he'll be at a festival and I'll give him a roll of old slide film that I found and he'll give me a roll of something. And, you know, it's, a, <laughs> it's pretty fun um, having, having those familiar faces that you bump into on the road. Like you might not see someone for a long time, then you bump in, it's like, back to old times but um i guess this was um it's kind of like a light leak on the edge of it which makes it sort of dreamy and fun um but what i was really focusing on here was that ride in the background was creating such a unique silhouette and like i said that depth again instead of having a crowd in the background i was able to have something else in the background that gave you don't need to know you're at a festival because, I mean, you don't need to see the crowd to know you're at a festival because you're like, what's going on here? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but just the angle at what it was, it was like I couldn't even, um, 
I had to be on the stage ground. And uh, so like I was, I had, I think I rested. I, I wasn't even looking. <clears throat> I tried to do a few, but I didn't want to like lie down on the stage because there's people running around and it's, you don't have that. You can't do that. <laughs> <clears throat> so it was sort of like I'd taken a few and I, I literally just sort of like had exposed up and I just sort of had lent the camera on its edge on the stage and just sort of waited. I was waiting for that ride to come up and down and for him to be in the right position as well. But it was sort of like that ride kept going up and coming down so quick. <laughs> and I was like, they were, they were changing people. And I'm like, come on, <laughs> go up again. Hey, listen, you, I noticed you got your camera you were holding out. Can you, I think, is this, is this your world, your very famous battered M6 that you got there? Yeah, yeah it yeah. is. I don't know how got, well you can see. That is hard earned patina. You can't fake that. <laughs> um, so, and a funny story, this camera was brand new when I got it. <clears throat> awesome. <clears throat> I, um, yeah. All right. This is I, um, oh, sorry. Are you going on? Oh, you're right. No, no. I was going to say, I, um, I got it off. I had purchased it um, off a collector and he had never even um, shot a roll on it. And he hit me up three weeks after I purchased it and was like, can I buy it back? And I was like, I've already put like 10 rolls through it. He would have died. Um, he, but yeah, I mean, I'm a big advocate for they're made to be used and like, you you know, they, they were made for war and being out on tour and is like, you know, going into battle a lot of the time in the pit. <clears throat> um, and yeah, it's sort of, it's probably the, only, I've had, I've had many cameras and it's the only one that can withstand being like quite heavily beat around. Um, yeah. And it, it, like you said, it shows for it, but um, yeah. It's been, it's fallen out of cabs. It's been left in hotels. I've had so many near death <laughs> heart attack moments. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's always on my body. All right. So um, this image here, a little bit different. So this is obviously, uh, you know, part of a festival. Are there tents in the background? Yeah. So this is back to that uh, festival in Victoria, Boogie, uh, you know, on the farm in Tullarook. <clears throat> and it's just sort of like there's a really beautiful light down there in the country in, um, in the evening. So the light had just gone down and it kind of sit, the festival sits in this sort of gully and I've, I'd, had, I'd sh shot it a number of years and I know that at that time, uh, it's usually around Easter time, <clears throat> in that spot on the site, there's a really beautiful light. And I was sort of just sort of like, I was going back to my tent, I think, to get something. And this kid was coming the other way. He was running around and he picked up. There was a thing that happened on, earlier in the day called Box Wars. That's a, they do like a performance piece and everything's made out of cardboard and it's all custom made by themselves. And there was like a, there was like a battle scene. So there was all these cardboard guns and armor lying around from after their performance earlier in the day. This kid had got some and he was running around with his friends and they were playing and he like, ran past me. I was like, Hey, come back, come back here. And he just sort of pulled it up straight to me straight away. And I was like, I got that shot. Um, yeah. But I just feel like it's the, there's so much in this shot for me. It's like, it's the dirt, it's the footprints. Yes. It's like leading into him. And it's also the uniqueness of like, what's going on. It's like a kid with a cardboard gun pointing it at my face. <laughs> It's kind of got that I Diane Arbor sort of, I don't know, there was something there that was sort of just like um, felt nostalgic. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> All right. Wistful, wistful shot, this one, I think. Yeah, this is Boogie as well, same festival. It's, um, and, and like this is an, another interesting point of um, a lot of these photos look like I'm just doing whatever I want <laughs> at a festival. But um, if I'm there, I'm, act I'm, I'm there working, I'm being employed and there's a job I have to do, which is like delivering a list of images that aren't these ones that you are seeing. You know, it's like photos of bars and photos of people with cans in hands and, you know, beautiful like people on shoulders with the sunset, like glistening and enjoying the time of their lives, which for me is like, that's cool. 
but for me, my film stuff is, you know, I want to see the people covered in dirt and not necessarily the stuff that the festival wants to, you know, use to promote their festival. So I've got my camera shooting my personal stuff on the side. <clears throat> but in saying that, Boogie Festival, because my friends run it and it's just sort of like a creative arts festival in a, in a sense, sort of like a Meredith um, I'm kind of let to just go do my own thing, which is a really unique freedom. And I think that kind of changes my whole mindset when I'm there because I'm only shooting for myself. And it's just to document what's happening and what's sort of catching my eye. So I, a lot of my favourite photos have been from Boogie over the last few years because I've had the freedom to just roam and find images that speak to me. Um, and document what's happening. Whereas, like, you know, I miss some of those opportunities when I'm working for a big festival because there's a whole bunch of other deliverables I've got to, uh, you know, uh, hand over. And the sort of the art side doesn't get to creep in as much. Um, yeah. But, yeah, this is just like one of those things of backstage, this guy, I don't even know how he got backstage. I don't think he was meant to be there. He wasn't talking to anyone. He was just like this lone cowboy and just the way he was just sitting there and the, the light, I just knew that, you know, his face went to black. He's kind of, you don't know who he is. Um, yeah. Yes. The yeah. beer tray in the background as well. The, you know, he's got the, the beer in his hand. This is like a whole unique thing going on there. Yeah. yeah. Now this, still, this looks like a much older shop, just judging by the style of everything. <clears throat> um, it's the same festival. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to say that. It's still boogie. Um, this is backstage. They have all uh, old caravans that they um, bring in for the staff and the artists to stay in uh, as their accommodation or get ready in. So this is actually like a backstage green room um, at an Australian festival on a farm. This is how you make it work. Um so, yeah, this is two bands, both from Melbourne. Um, you've got a younger band on the left, that's Amel and the Sniffers. <clears throat> and then on the right, standing on the platform, is a band called, um, if I'm allowed to swear, it's called uh, Tropical F-Storm. So, um, but the, there's a members from that band that were in a, an iconic Melbourne band called The Drones. <clears throat> They were literally just um, hanging out backstage um, before um, Amel set and um, I was there and I was just sort of like, hey, turn around. And this is the way the light was and where they were and we took a few photos. But it was very much like you can see one guy's talking to someone else. They're getting ready. You know, they're getting their guitars and gear ready. Um, you know, I, they weren't necessarily posing for me. It was that thing of like, this is cool. I put myself in the right position. I called out. Um, to one of them and they turned around and, you know, you get a few looks, have a bit of banter. Um, yeah. yeah. No, it's good. I like that. I actually, this is one of my favourite ones of the set, actually. It, it, it just looks like totally 60s or something like that. But of course, It's got a, such a nice feel. That's the thing with this festival as well. Like I said, everyone's get up, everyone's dressing the part. Mm. So you kind of feel like you've like time travelled and it makes, mm. you know, it gives the photos such a... Um, it give, it like it plays into the feel of the imagery yeah. for sure. It, Just as like all the shots I'll take with all people with iPhones in their hands yeah. these days in 10 years will look, you know, I don't know what we'll be doing. Yeah. <laughs> Got another question for you. Um, yeah. Dan Shaw wants to know, it's a good question. How do you avoid missing shots when you're reloading the film? You do it quick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a good answer. Sometimes you miss shots, you know. Yeah. There's always another photo there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever taken I, um, your best shot? Yeah, I, I feel like I miss photos all the time. I'll be like, God damn it. <laughs> um, just get quicker. Yeah. You practice. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think you learn to get pretty quick, especially yeah. when you're at festivals where it's like first three songs <clears throat> and then you're out. So you've only got, you know, limited time. Yeah. <clears throat> this is Laneway, back to Laneway Festival. Um, and this is a band called Gang of Youths, which are quite um, well known. And they're a bunch of my buddies. <clears throat> this was just, yeah. Um, we'd done the start of the tour. Uh, and this is in Adelaide also. Um, uh, we'd shot, uh, we'd started the tour, and then I did a press shoot with them in the middle of the tour. 
which ended up becoming um, the cover photo on their album, Go Father in Lightness, the photo of um, there's a, a girl on a bed with a dog. Um, and then there's a whole, like the whole gatefold layout of all their portraits I did. And then the next day we went to Adelaide. So I'd been hang I'd been spending a bit of time with these guys and, you know, they're so lovely. Um, we kind of, yeah, we're really good buddies now. I toured with them last year. <clears throat> oh no, not last year, <laughs> the year before last. <laughs> um, when I was in the U S they were over there and they were touring with Mumford and Sons. And I was able to, I was like, Hey, do you got a shooter sorted for this yet? They're like, no, you're coming with us. I was like, okay. <laughs> um, but this is like they do like a, a huddle before they go on stage <clears throat> and i was just sort of hanging around and it's also like the, the small sometimes like on a festival run like the big fest the the sydney and melbourne dates can be really chaotic there's a lot going on um you find when you get to like um adelaide or perth it's the small the stages have been stripped back a little bit it's a little bit more relaxed everyone's a little bit more i don't know there's kind of like a different air. You're able to sort of like get around a little easier on these stages, maybe. Yeah. And also the way that lighting works on these stages with like the gutted sides, that it sort of creates these nice like um, funnels of light, you know, it creates really nice sort of places to take photos. So this is just sort of one of those moments. I knew I kind of wanted everything to fall off in the background. So I would have been shooting quite, um, you know, quite open. This is a change of pace. Uh, Boogie. Yeah. yeah. These two fellas. Um, they were two guys working on site down at Boogie. They're like, they come with the furniture. You know, you move in to do the festival and they were already there. <laughs> <laughs> and there was just sort of like that thing of like, they were walking towards me and I was like, hey guys. And they sort of like, heads up, heads down. But I sort of love the, um, you know, there's so much going on here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that is that the last one. Shadows. I think that's oh no, this one. I think this is the last one. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, yes. So this is the only one that isn't from an Australian festival. This is in the US from Lollapalooza. My first year I went there, um, and this was just there. Yeah, I was heading from one stage to another, and these uh, these kids were like just playing in this tree, and I don't know. There was just a there was just a feel like an innocence to it that I just. I don't know. Yeah. I had to snap it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah like I love how urban. soft this Definitely. is. <laughs> and it's a finer grain film for me because it would have been middle of the day. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sort of trying to anticipate here. This is the last one I remember. I was just trying to remember which the last shot was. So yeah, uh, uh, this is the only one here which is more of a formal sort of portrait. So well, it's, it stands out to me. Yeah. It's, um, it's more of a studio setup. And that was taken last year. Um, during the lockdown or kind of like as we were coming out of it here in sydney and we could do stuff like this mm -hmm. but um isabel um manfredi she is the lead singer in a well-known australian band called the preachers mm -hmm. um and she was just sort of um wanting to do a bunch of photos just on her own um and she reached out and we i've shot them live before um and know um, a bunch of the guys in the band but we'd never really done proper press shots or anything sort of formal like this so when izzy reached out to me it was like just a really nice opportunity um and we, this was just like a um available light studio space in sydney um that we lined up and we just spent a few hours there it was just me and her it was like very <clears throat> it was my first shoot actually um kind of coming out of lockdown from not shooting so i don't know it was like a lot slower pace usually i work quite quickly on a shoot um and usually i'm shooting more on location not so much in a studio uh so this was like slowed everything down we were just in there and we sort of like we were just like hanging out. We caught up and then we just started taking photos and she knew what she sort of liked and she had some good tunes on. And this was just one of those, yeah, those these moments of us just sort of like um, having fun. Yeah. And it was on also like shooting on quite a high ISO. I was shooting on uh, 3200 uh, uh, T-Max, the, the Kodak. 
So I knew it was going to be quite grainy. I shot some stuff on a slower speed film as well, but uh, this sort of just played into that whole mm. feel and vibe. Um, I think there's, there's, um, and, yeah, I feel like the the like is really nice in those situations, the M6, because it's so quiet and discreet that um, it made it more, like I said, about the moment. Yeah. And yeah. that's sort of like what I've said throughout this is, you know, it's sort of like trying to convey a feeling um, more so than like having everything perfectly exposed and perfectly framed. Um, you know, I kind of like stuff that's a little bit off <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. in a way. Yeah. There's one thing that just, I'm going to, um, well, that was the last picture. So we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll draw things to a close in a sec, but I just want, want to make an observation, which to see if you agree with is that this sort of shot to me is vastly as much about you as it is about her, because there's no way somebody who's just a photographer who knows how to take good pictures could approach this sort of picture because you need that relationship and you need to be able to spend some time. You said you were just there hanging out. Well, not everybody can do that. So your a lot of your skill, I think, is yes. not necessarily photographic technically, but it's also the ability to have conversations and just hang out with people and put them at their ease and so on. Is that, is that a fair thing to say, do you think? <clears throat> oh, 100%. Um, I think especially with my line of uh, photography, it's so much, like that's the whole other half of it is about the hang. It's like, can you hang out? <laughs> mm -hmm. Can you um, not talk? <laughs> or put your opinion in when, you know, you're backstage and someone's talking about something and, you know, you're going to throw in your, you know, know when to sort of participate and where to be um, sort of like a little bit of a dance. Um, and it's only something that you uh, kind of can gauge from just being there, you know. Um, some people... Um, some people's energy is a lot different than others. So you can be a lot more vocal and um, involved uh, where sometimes you do have to take that back seat and wait for moments to come to you. But yeah, know, know um, your place. relationship um, is a big part of it. Um, yeah, right. I've been appreciating it more. Yeah, yeah. And um, so that's why this whole, like we've, me and Izzy met up, um, you know, the week, I oh know we spoke, we didn't meet up before this one, we met up before another shoot we did a few months later. But, um, you know, just talking and seeing what page they're on and, like, uh, you know, inspiration in the form of, like, send me some of the tracks you're working on and listening to the lyrics in them and yeah. what is she going through and what is she feeling and, um, you know, relating to someone. I'm not trying to steal something from them. Uh, it's like a, like we were saying, yeah, that collaborative um, sort of process. And it might not even be like one of her songs she sends me. I'm like, what's well, just like a song that you're listening to nonstop at the moment? And like, I might walk around the block listening to that and see what comes into my head and what I'm feeling, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All those, that sort of stuff. All right. Uh, anybody got any more questions for Mackay um, before yeah. we uh, call a halt to proceedings? We've run a few minutes over time, but that's okay. I'm sure that's uh, all been, there's been some really good insights there. So anybody got any more questions for Mackay? Um, I think I'd like to thank you, Mackay, for some quite candid insights there too, because, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that you've shared with us, which is just not at all obvious um, to people who don't do what you do the way that you do it. So I hope people have appreciated that side of things. It's not all about the camera and clicking the shutter. There's so much more to uh, carving out a career in any field, really, but particularly in this one. Um, Ken says, great presentation. Yeah. Thank you very much. Gary Gordon says, thank you, McLeod. Don't forget to try a digital Leica. <laughs> I'm sure you have. Um, Thanks, Ken. Valerie Jenkins says, oh, we are going back into lockdown again. I've got an M10 right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to get your, I'll be interested to hear what you think about it. Um, so, look, everybody's no. just thank you very much. No more questions. That's great. So, look, McClay, thank you so much. Let me just unshare that so we can pop back on the screen. 
Um, really, really enjoyed talking to you. We've never met you and I, because I'm in Brisbane and you're in Sydney, but uh, next time, if we ever get to travel around in the near future, I'll have to uh, come and look you up because uh, I've really enjoyed your insights and your perspective on things. And uh, I hope everybody else has too. So um, I'll, I'm gonna say toodaloo and McLeod, you wanna say thanks everybody and goodbye.